morning. Welcome to Confluence. I wish all of us are able to meet in person. Hopefully soon. Ram Emanuel famously said, you should not let crisis go to waste. Over the next 20 minutes, I'll talk about how global centers of excellence navigated the current crisis over the last few months, look at some of the opportunities that is created due to the pandemic, and structural changes that GCOs have to go through to come out stronger at the end of this crisis. When the pandemic hit in March, the global centers of excellence reacted much faster compared to any other industry. They were able to move over a million employees to work from home in just in two weeks. Leaders and operation teams worked really hard to make the experience seamless for employees. The second was to focus on productivity. And because there was no travel, maybe the employees were monitored by the family at home the productivity in many of the organizations, in fact, went up. And the third was to focus on employee engagement. Over the last few years, companies have been breaking walls and cubicles to help people come together and collaborate very closely in open offices. Now we have to go 180 degrees to focus on employee engagement using tools like Teams, Zoom, and WebEx. HR teams were very creative in engaging the employees, not just in fun activities, but also in serious challenges such as mental health. The next was to focus on learning and development. We believe the learning and development, in fact, got better during this crisis. HR teams were able to access the leaders who are otherwise not traveling to mentor the teams very closely. They were also able to reach out to leaders outside of the organization to conduct sessions for their employees. Now that we have a baseline for work from home, the next phase is to digitize the overall unstructured innovation process. Let us hear from some of the leaders talk about the resilience of their teams. So at Siena, uh, we have numerous examples of our engineers going above and beyond the call of duty and supporting customers during this lockdown. Um, like some of our engineers traveling 10 hours a day over a long period of time to make sure we uh, at home get uninterrupted connectivity. Um, same, same time our R&D facility turning into a shield manufacturing unit for a certain period of time. And of course, very generous CSR contribution from our employees and, and the company matching 3x uh, towards the right cost. And our uh, pandemic uh, benefits extending to support our employees manage their work from home experience. Uh, but I want to uh, call out how as a team across the globe, we united for a common cause to contribute to the environment. CNA as a team has planted over 7,000 trees, creating 13.7 acres of new forest, uh, which will capture over 32 tons of carbon dioxide, CO2, during this lockdown, which uh, uh, with the help of uh, Tree Nation's uh, planting projects. Um, so I must say our people um, uh, are important. Our success is rooted in people, um, as together we can make a big difference. Thank you. A team from across SAP, coming from admin, from corporate social responsibility, from facilities, as well as physical security, came together to serve more than four lakh meals during the lockdown period, cooked in our SAP Labs India kitchen for the stranded workers. A team of developers worked with volunteers in Haveri, a remote district of Karnataka, to provide relief to the villagers. A couple of our employees played an incredibly active role as part of the Corona Warriors Task Force to feed the poor, to distribute dry ration, and supply other essential commodities to the needy. Some even leveraged their own technology expertise and joined hands with bodies like NASCOM and other prominent institutions to develop analytical tools to track the spread of the virus. I'm incredibly proud of Zenor team. This team reacted very quickly to create the support infrastructure for organizations to, to collaborate during this crisis. We created a real-time communication channel for informal sharing between organizations. We created an outplacement network for employees who are being laid off from global centers of excellence so that they can find jobs in other GCOEs. Fortunately, there are a lot more companies hiring than the number of companies which are letting go employees. We also did a benchmark of over 150 data points across productivity, remote work, 
employee engagement, learning and development, and safety. This information was used by organizations to make decisions, validate their existing decisions, and even use it to communicate to the global teams. We also conducted a number of virtual events and engaged over 15,000 members of the GCOE community, community over the last few months. Even though we have done well as a community, we are still in the early part of the pandemic and there are several challenges we need to address as a community. First is the health crisis. It is a matter of time that some members of your team or their family members get infected. And as organization, we got to have the right processes and support infrastructure to address this crisis. Second, there is not going to be international travel for the foreseeable future. And international travel is the lifeblood of GCOEs. The, it is the only way till now for us to gain buy-in from new global stakeholders, to build social capital with global leaders, and even to transition complex projects to India. And we got to figure out tools alternate tools for all of these over the next few months. And the third challenge is the extended work from home. Even though we have done well in the initial phase, that could be fatigue which will set in with employees and social capital could erode over a period of time. I'm pretty sure as a community, we will come together to address these challenges. Even though we have these challenges, we also have exciting opportunities. The decoupling of US and China trade could create opportunity for India to build manufacturing and supply chain. Companies are now working from across, across the country and we can move from having one or two centers to several centers across the country. And digital is accelerating and there is a significant opportunity for GCOEs to take leadership in driving some of these digital programs from India. Fourth, Companies which are impacted by the pandemic are looking for newer revenue streams and business models, and the GCOEs could become an incubation factory for these ideas. And finally, Geo raising billions of dollars over the last few months from tech giants and private equity firms has showcased the potential of India market for all global firms. Let us look at each of this in some level of detail. Decoupling of the US and China market started a few years ago and hastened during the pandemic. The trade war already had created uncertainty in minds of companies which had manufacturing and market presence in China. During the pandemic, countries realized that they're relying on China even for things like PPE and masks. Even the US companies which are manufacturing in China were not able to export these back to the countries. The political tension on top of this between these countries have also created significant amount of uncertainties. Now several US large manufacturers are seriously thinking about alternate locations to China. It is going to be very expensive for them to bring back the manufacturing into their home locations and India could be a great choice for companies to set up that manufacturing. Because of global centers of excellence driving engineering, this could be a big differentiator for organizations. GCOE should work very closely with the global manufacturing teams as well as India business teams to build business case to bring manufacturing into India. It could create a 750 billion US dollars market in India and GCOE should not underestimate their impact on creating this massive opportunity for India. Over the last few months, we not only saw the migration of daily workers to remote location, but also technology and operations team of GCOEs. We wanted to analyze the banking GCOEs as they had the stringent uh, regulation to see how many cities they are working from. We were able to track 60 plus cities where the employees are currently working from. In fact, one of the site leaders said their technology team is working from over 100 plus cities today. This is a trend we should take advantage of. Every one GCOE job in one of the remote location creates several support jobs. And even for the employees, it's great to be close to the family. They don't have to travel and the cost of living is less. If as an industry, we take a coordinated effort with thousand plus GCOEs act together, 
we can really create a reverse, reverse migration trend in India. As an industry, we have a power to do something about this. At Zuno, we started a small experiment. When we started the incubation of our enterprise intelligence platform drop a few years ago, we started a small team in a village about 250 kilometers from Bangalore. And today, that team is working from 30 different villages because they had to work from home. And many of these team members don't have the necessary digital infrastructure at home. And they work very hard to ensure they're able to give the same productivity outcome. If GCOEs are able to take a lead, the rest of the industries will follow. Zoho has taken a lead in the, bud, in the budding SaaS industry in India. It is time for us to act. Digital acceleration in the next few years is a given. For example, telemedicine demand has been staggering. Only 11% of the US consumers were using telemedicine last year, but the demand skyrocketed to 50% over the last few months. We expect the market size for telemedicine to grow to over $25 billion in the next few years. It's just not telemedicine, contactless commerce, intelligent workplace, digital threats, and smart governance by countries, states, and municipalities will rapidly scale over the next few years. The key ingredient for being successful in these areas is access to modern skills. India graduating over 1.5 million engineers every year, GCOEs have an unfair advantage over other locations to become the center of excellence for these technology areas. Companies and countries are looking to take advantage of the short-term as well as long-term opportunities created due to the pandemic. Companies such as Honeywell are looking at breakthrough innovation in areas such as UAV and quantum computing. Indian government is working with iSpirit to create digital platform to digitize the lending process for small business. Companies are trying to repurpose their manufacturing units to manufacture newer products or utilize the service network to provide additional services to their existing customers. With India's adaptive and diverse culture, collaborative environment, and access to the large Asia market, we believe that GCOEs can unearth several of these opportunities to other countries and companies. If someone still has doubts about the India market, they should change their mind after hearing the crazy fundraising story of Geo during the peak of the pandemic. It started with the announcement that Facebook is going to invest in Geo, and followed by tech giants and other private equity firms investing over $20 billion. Imagine 1.3 billion Indians having access to inexpensive world-class digital infrastructure. On top of that, if the government deregulates manufacturing and supports startups and SMBs, the productivity in India could increase, increasing income wages as well as discretionary income. $20 billion investment by tech giants as well as private equity firms shows that some of the smartest people in the world believe in the India market. GCOE should look at these opportunities for the organization and ensure their organizations are able to take advantage of the India opportunity. Before we take advantage of some of these opportunities, we need to address some of the structural challenges at the GCOEs. GCO has done a great job in addressing the pandemic. However, there are a lot of internal stressors that make these centers fragile. Even now, global centers of excellence goes, continue to go back in maturity whenever there is a change in global leadership. And leaderships hunt in packs. When the CEO or exec changes, they bring in their own team who have their own playbook for globalization. GCOE maturity is also based on one or two intrapreneurial leaders. Often, heroes move on to other companies or global roles within the organization. That impacts the overall GCOE maturity as well as stability. Proximity bias exists in large companies even today. The new projects and new businesses are often provided to teams which have proximity to the leadership teams. There is also a flip-flop of organization structure as well as governance based on the new leadership team's playbook in the headquarters. And GCOEs are even considered as assets that companies can sell. There has been a lot of media noise 
about how technology service providers in India are looking to take over GCOEs. GCOEs have several internal stresses that is making them fragile. When we were looking for frameworks to address these challenges, we found this term anti-fragile. The term was coined by Nassim Talib, the author of the book Black Swan. He said there are three types of systems. The first set of systems are the ones which are fragile to external stresses. Second are robust, nothing changes when there are external stresses. And third set of systems are systems which get better with external stresses. Anti-fragile systems are the ones which get better. Your body gets better with exercise, it gets fitter. Uh, security of the cloud providers gets better with continuous effort by, by hackers to break in. Even Silicon Valley is an anti-fragile ecosystem. It learns from thousands of failures to create a few large, large companies. Talib has a set of principles for an anti-fragile system. The first, it should be governed by a simple set of rules. It is decentralized. It is layered so that it can learn from mistakes in one layer in another layer. It welcomes randomness. It prioritizes practitioners. And the most important thing, the stakeholders have the soul in the game. We use these principles to design an anti-fragile GCOE. Anti-fragile GCOE has three stakeholders, company, employees, and the country. Most GCOEs optimize for only the company as a stakeholder. And the company uses the GCOE as a tactical tool to solve a specific problem, and then the GCOE loses its relevance. When you equally prioritize for all the three stakeholders, you have an opportunity to create an institution rather than a fragile organization. GCOE also has a sponsorship grid, a CX source of various functions, mid-level managers who work with the GCOE on a daily basis from global locations, as well as external stakeholders, be it government and other parts of the ecosystem, act as a sponsor for the GCOE. So when the primary sponsor leaves, the system doesn't break. A GCOE also has dual core instead of a single core. The first core is the experiment, experiment core. Experiment core contains intrapreneurs who work on several ideas and learn from these ideas. Most of these ideas could be failure. Some of it could be successful. The second is the scale core. A scale core has two functions. One function is to help expand the portfolio of work which is being done here, both in terms of size as well as value. Second is to take the experiments which has worked well and scale these experiments with the right business model. The anti-fragile GCOE is also tightly integrated with the external ecosystem of startups, academia, as well as technology service providers. Anti-fragile GCOE welcomes stress. It gets stronger, effective, and innovative with more stresses on the system. If we have the right structure and operating model, we'll be able to take advantage of the window of opportunity in the next few years. We have a chance to gain complex know-how that will allow us to conceptualize and build breakthrough innovations. We have a chance to build an integrated global supply chain that will make India a manufacturing hub. And we have a chance to make India a hub for $500 billion of digital engineering spend. We should make sure we don't let the crisis go to waste and make the required structural changes to act on the opportunities that will enhance all the three stakeholders, your company, your employees, and our country.